Hi, I'm Ty Justice. Just a few short years after his creation in 1928 and ensuing massive popularity, Mickey Mouse was starting to wane in mass appeal. By the late 1930s, Donald Duck was quickly taking the number one spot as the favored child at the Walt Disney Studios. I personally think it's because the irascible duck was simply more relatable to the movie-going public, especially as the Great Depression drug on and Mickey's cheery optimism was becoming less relatable than Donald's more realistic emotional outbursts, none of which are more comically suppressed until they're not in Bellboy Donald from 1942. Mine? Yours? <laughs> The war years were hard for Walt Disney. The European market was naturally closed off to American theatrical interests, dooming many film projects that had been in the works for years, and at great expense to Walt and his company. Many of the classics we know now, like Pinocchio, had to be released multiple times to be considered successful. To subsidize his losses in revenue, Walt also allowed the War Department to infiltrate his studio and make training videos for the military. Walt didn't like this one bit, seeing so much control slip away from him. On the bright side, though, Disney Studios did help with the film Victory Through Air Power, which is credited with proving that the United States needed to invest more in air combat, which it did, and thus turned the tide of the war. I find that amongst the turmoil, Disney put out some really great content around this time, including Bellboy Donald. Working in hotels for years also makes this one hit home a little different now than it did when I watched it as a kid. Come, boy. The 80th floor, please. Yes, sir. The short starts with Donald working at the Lofty Manors Hotel, being chewed out by the hotel manager and given his last warning about his attitude, even mentioning something about striking the guests. Good for him. How that didn't get him fired, though, on the spot baffles me. I mean... There were guests I wanted a cold cock, but thankfully I held back. Donald is then given a button to wear that states the guest is always right, which right there would send me into a frenzy. Because in my experience, not only is the guest rarely right, but more often than not, they're usually dead wrong. As you can see, I've already sided with the duck, no matter what he did. <laughs> you haven't much on the ball, eh? Donald then gets smacked with the worst guest he's ever experienced, a bratty, spoiled, obnoxious guest's child. Being reminded by the pen that no matter what he endures, that the guest is always right. <sighs> Which brings up a question. You ever kick a kid? I mean, one that really deserved it. I mean, not saying it's right, but you know, it just really feels great. Finally, once he's had enough and turns red as a tomato, he snatches the little monster torturing him and drags him to the front desk and asks his boss directly. Am I fired? Yes, you're fired. That's all I wanted to go. Help, stop murder me. Help, stop it. Help, stop murder me. Help. The perfect ending. Now, I did have to deal with some of the worst people imaginable at the front desk, but thankfully, very few terrible kids. Donald was voiced, of course, by Clarence Ducky Nash, who voiced Donald from his inception in the 30s until Mickey's Christmas Carol in 1983. Come along,
Bellboy Donald, as of this filming, is not available on Disney+, Plus, but can be found officially on the Disney Treasures set, The Chronological Donald, Volume 2. But much of Donald's output isn't available to stream. I hope it has to do with remastering the shorts first, then putting them on Disney+, Plus, as opposed to Disney being overly sensitive to the spanking in it. Either way, Bellboy Donald is peak Donald. Tension, stakes, and a great payoff that for anyone who's worked in customer service, namely hotels, is simply perfect. I'm Ty Justice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.